More forms of transport are in use in Asia than anywhere else in the world. The earliest means of moving goods was simply to carry them. This is often done on the head, which is particularly common in India. In India, the maximum permissible load on the head is 100 kilograms. This makes carrying our two suitcases really easy. The practice has spread to Myanmar as well. In Vietnam, China and Myanmar, the load is often carried in panniers on a pole. There's only so far you can carry a heavy load yourself, so the next step is to recruit an animal. Donkeys are okay for smaller loads or one person, but for a big load or a group you need a bigger animal, as here in Nepal. Animals require regular maintenance. In India, elephants are used for ceremonial transport and can be highly decorated. The passengers ride in howdahs and these can be very elaborate as shown in this museum. The howdahs in Cambodia are different again and not too easy to get into, even from a raised platform. In desert regions the only practical pack animal is a camel. With the invention of the wheel, even heavier loads could be hand pulled, as here in Calcutta. It didn't take long to work out that if you put an animal in front of the cart, you could move even more with much less effort. Bullocks are widely used in Nepal, India and Cambodia. Once again, the best animal for desert regions is the camel. If you want speed and rather more comfort, then the horse is your animal as we see here in Myanmar. These Cambodian carriages are a little more refined, but these beautiful Burmese ones are even better. When the bike came along, thousands took to them for transport and leisure. Very rapidly, the Vietnamese strapped panniers on and then a third wheel was added to produce the trishaw, as here in Nepal. Various versions of these, some with the passengers behind the driver and some with them in front, are now found all over the east. Of course, these can be used to carry goods as well, and it's amazing how much you can get on one track, though sometimes it gets so much that you end up having to push it anyway. Is there a collective name for rickshaws? Putting an engine in a bike produces transport for the whole family. In Cambodia they hang a trailer on the back and it becomes the taxi. Extend the trailer a bit and you've got a bus. In China they go for a motor tricycle, though this can't be extended. Once you put four wheels in front, like these tractors in India, you can pull almost anything. Bringing the whole lot together causes chaos and pollution, so in sensitive parts of India and China they use electric buses. To give the buses a clear run, the Indians put them on rails and called them trams. Another form of guided transport is the chairlift, which can be tricky to get on and off. From this, the cable car was developed to carry four and ultimately the cable gondola for large groups. The hot air balloon breaks away from the guides and the traffic. Then there are trains. From steam in India via diesel in Myanmar to the 300 km per hour maglev in Shanghai, Asia has them all, but that's another story. <laughs>